Hello there everybody, welcome back to another concert review. Today I'm going to be discussing a concert that I went to last night, uh, September the 5th in Charlottesville, Virginia. This is my third concert um, at this particular venue. Um, first time I went, I saw the Wood Brothers with Shovels and Rope. I was just here a month ago to see the Head and the Heart. And today I'm going to be talking about a concert experience where I got to see, for the first time, a band out of Columbus, Ohio called Camp. Now, <clears throat> this is at the uh, Ting Pavilion in Charlottesville, Virginia, which is a, uh, again, outdoor amphitheater, probably holds 8,000-ish, uh, maybe a little bit less. Um, sold out show, which is really cool. Um, I've never been there for a sold out show. I got there fairly early. The gates open at 620. I was pretty much in the gate about 630. Um, I'd already eaten and everything, got down there, um, got my general admission wristband so I could go in and out as I please from the general admission area and um, was right down front. I was 20 feet from the stage. Um, and again, those of you that saw my head in the heart video know how close the stage is to the general admission area. Uh, again, I've never seen this band before. I went by myself and uh, I, j I had found out the day before that one of my favorite female singer songwriters named Dory Freeman was going to be opening. Now, I love Dory Freeman. Um, she is a singer-songwriter out of Galax, Virginia, which is just about an uh, hour and a half, hour 45 from my back door. Front door, I've only got one door in my apartment. Um, and I've seen Dory Freeman. Actually, I did a video on Dory Freeman back in November. I saw her in Floyd, Virginia at the Floyd Country Store, for those of you that are familiar. And I saw her open for Oliver Wood of the Wood Brothers last year. So I've seen Dory a couple of times. I was very excited that she was the opening bill. That made me very happy. I've got all of her records. She has a new album coming out, I think, in October. Um, she's just released a single or two from that record. So go, go check her out on YouTube and Spotify. Uh, her biggest song is probably You Say, which is the first song from this album. This is her first self-titled. But um, she sang songs like You Go On Lovin', um, Still a Child. And yeah, she did songs from her other albums as well, but Dory Freeman is very good. Her husband um, plays the drums in the band, um, and his name is, uh, let's see, well, maybe, sorry, in advance, I'm going to get one of her other records. Um, Nick Falk, that's his name, Nicholas Falk, he was there, um, he kind of doubles as her MC. This is her second album for those interested, called Every Shining Star, Every Single Star, and, um, so he played, and what was interesting about him was that he actually ended up coming back out, and he played drums with camp for the whole, their, their whole show, and, um, about halfway through Dory Freeman's set, the bass player, um, from camp came out, sat in on several songs of theirs, um, which was kind of cool. So he played um, with Dory Freeman. Uh, again, the Dory finished up probably about eight o'clock, close to eight. She probably started about seven twenty, and uh, played about forty minutes worth of music. Really, really enjoyed it. She got a nice response, uh, and then camp came out and you know did did their thing and again if you don't know camp they are currently touring under this album called lavender days which was a fantastic record one of my favorites of 2022 um this record holds a lot of significance to me um especially the song lavender girl from this album which they played last night um but songs i can hear like come with me now believe the otter apple tree blues uh all my lonesome they only did a couple of, actually, they only did two or three songs from this album, which was interesting. Um, they did a lot of their earlier stuff. I'm not as familiar with Camp as I am a lot of other bands, so I'm a little ignorant to them, unfortunately. But um, they did do the, do the songs Lavender Girl, All My Lonesome, um, Believe, Snowshoes, which was uh, really good. And, and Nick on the drums was really kind of like upping the tempo a little bit. So they were kind of um, singing on some of these songs a little bit faster. But if you don't know Camp, the lead singer, um, Taylor, what's his name? Taylor Meyer. He uh, has this really smoky voice. Um, 
not smoky like Rod Stewart per se, but smoky in that it's just got this, I don't know, it's it, it's almost like, you know, he's been smoking all day and that's what he sounds like. Um, and he's my age and uh, came out looking pretty cool. He had, you know, skinny as a rail. He had a kind of a, a mullet thing going on, but they, again, they're folky. They play um, banjo. They have stand-up bass and some songs, some electric stuff, some more, um, a little bit of uh, Americana rock, a little bit um, to their stuff. Just really, really good songwriting, great sound. Again, they sound like summer to me. Um, I also really like this album, which was the previous album from Lavender Days. It was the precursor called By and By. This is how I came to know them on Sirius XM's The Spectrum, Channel 28. Uh, the song Peach Fuzz was the first that I heard of theirs. Unfortunately, they didn't play it that night. But they did do songs like uh, Feels Like Home, Wolf Song, Penny Heads Up, uh, Moon Smoke, um, By and By. So great stuff off of here. They also did a single, a digital single called Officer of Love, which is a really nice um, highlight to the to the night. And um, one of the coolest moments of the show was actually the bass singer or the bass player of Camp, whose name is, excuse me, again, I'm not a major, like I'm not a huge fan, Matt Vinson, uh, the bass player. He sang Don't Let Me Down by the Beatles. And it was really cool. I will say this was probably the youngest concert that I've ever been to. Very young crowd. And to see a bunch of people in their 20s, uh, in teenagers and early 30s, singing Don't Let Me Down, which is not a Beatles song that you hear on the radio. It's not like, you know, Hey Jude or something like that. It, it It's, you know, in Beatles lore, if the Beatles had a deeper cut, it's kind of a deeper cut. And the fact that people sang it and Camp played it pretty much straight through was really, really a cool moment to hear them play that song and, again, have that kind of response from the crowd. So um, I thought that was really cool. Um, again, probably... Temperature-wise, probably the hottest concert, actually the hottest concert I've ever been to. I will say that. I went to a show in 2019. I saw the Steve Miller Band and Marty Stewart in Lynchburg, Virginia. It was outside down by the, um, the James River. And that was the hottest day of the year in July. And um, it was hot. But last night, because it's an amphitheater, it was covered. So it's like a big circus tent. They packed in people and it was sold out and the heat was just unbelievable. I mean, thankfully the venue passes out little mini water bottles. So I drank one of those. I um, didn't really want to give up my spot. And I rushed back to my car at the end of the show and I had a, um, like a, a sports water, like a, a flavored water in my car and I just chugged it immediately. Then I went to a gas station and picked up a Gatorade and a bottle of water to drink on the way home. It's about two hours from my apartment. So I was uh, trying to stay hydrated, didn't pass out, but my shirt was just drenched. I feel like I could have, you know, wrung it out. But great show, great crowd, not too rowdy. Um, yeah, what was interesting, though, is that actually my boss at work was going to go see camp tonight of the time that I'm filming this in Raleigh, North Carolina. But camp put out a statement this morning, uh, almost actually around noon saying that they canceled their, their shows for the rest of the year because their singer Taylor is struggling with some mental health and just some health within the band. So the show I saw was the last show of 2023. They canceled festival dates. Um, they've canceled again, dates through November. I think they had dates through, you know, set up through November. And so that was a big shock. I, my boss left work early. I called her and I was like, Hey, camp canceled their show, uh, for the rest of the year. And so, you know, she was going to drive down to North Carolina to see them. And unfortunately, they weren't going to play. So um, I'm glad I got to see them. You know, I don't know what they're like live normally, but it was very good last night. Uh, again, not necessarily high energy, but the crowd, I mean, they were diehard fans. They knew all the words, and that was really cool to hear everybody. Um, and I remember doing the show, I was uh, standing next to somebody who um, had gone um, to the show by herself. So she, she said it was the first time that she had ever seen a show by herself. So that was kind of cool. Um, and we kind of bonded a little bit during the show. And, um, it's always neat to go to concerts and have those moments with people that, you know, aren't, uh, you know, you don't think they would come into your life, but they do during, you know, music. And so it was just really, a, really a cool event. And she was obviously a diehard fan.
um, of the band. So that was cool. But yeah, I would recommend going to see Camp. Definitely pick up this album if you like banjo, but not bluegrass. It's not bluegrass music at all. Um, it's just like background banjo. Very nice. Very much like, you know, go out to, you know, drive down the road, um, have a picnic outside kind of stuff under the stars and listen to just really nice um, music and singing. So there you go, folks. That is my review of Camp at the Team Pavilion in Charlottesville, Virginia. Please let me know if you were at the show. Let me know if you were going to go see one of the shows and it got canceled. So in the meantime, y'all be good. Take care and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye now.